Welcome, guys, to the Beacon of Nick podcast number one. In five, four, three, two, one. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you for watching. This is the Beacon of Nick with my special guest for the night, Benjamin Ebig. Ben is a samurai ninja warrior, Purple Heart recipient, badass. Uh, actually, he's just a really cool guy, and he's got a lot of credentials, and he's an entrepreneur, and he's a really fascinating human being, and I'm excited to talk to him. Ben, take it away. Thank you, Nick, for that wonderful, colorful introduction. It is an honor to be here on the Beacon of Nick podcast. Most, uh, so, most of you may know me from my own podcast, the Code of Life podcast. M many of you may have heard my interview from the wonderful Nick sitting across the wonderful computer ethos right now. <laughs> it is an honor to be here on your podcast, Nick. Ben, it is an honor to have you, man. I, whenever I talk to you, Ben, it's always a good conversation. and I always, I always leave the conversation with, with something more than when I started. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, it is an honor to hear that. And if you don't mind, I might just clip that and uh, put it in a testimonial. <laughs> ben, put it in whatever you need to put it in, man, because it's true. Like, there's, <laughs> there's, I think in like any conversation in life, I think I think it's cool because like most people don't think of this as like what a conversation actually is. But like, it's almost like you you sit across from somebody, and then basically you expose yourself you, you kind of make yourself vulnerable and pieces of yourself like fall fall apart and then that person's ideas kind of replace where those pieces fell off like you're almost like you're almost like destroying yourself so that person can like can can give you uh the pieces that you that you that you lost in a way you know what i mean you can you can kind of pick and choose what you want to give and take but it, it's almost like you, you allow yourself to be vulnerable and you break apart and then you, at the end of the, and at the end of the conversation, you 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 learn more about yourself, and that kind of fills in the cracks in a way. You lost me there, in a, like halfway through that, but I, uh, you you got me again at the very end of that. I, uh, I definitely get what you're saying. I know a lot of people who, uh, they don't allow themselves to be vulnerable. They, uh, as you say, they don't allow their like pieces to be shown. They don't allow their like. So many people have something to offer the world. And they, because they don't allow themselves to, like, their inner voices, their stories to be heard, it ro it robs them of, it robs them of their own gifts, and it also robs the world of sharing their gifts. That is, that is completely true. Like, I think, like, we all have varying degrees of intelligence, and we all have varying degrees of, like, of, of creativity and openness and, like, um how deep we think in a way. I think, I think the, the, the level, how, how, how deep you could think is not even connected to how smart you are in, in, in any sense. You know what I mean? Right. I know a lot of people that like are not that smart, but they, the way they think is very deep. And I, I know people that are extremely smart and they, they don't, you know, they're, they're very on the surface, which it, it varies so much. But like, I think no matter who you're talking to, no matter what their level of, 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 of thinking is, you can definitely take something away from that person and that you didn't know before or something. You can look at something in a brand new light that you, you didn't have prior to that conversation. Uh, absolutely, I know. Uh, I won't. I won't name names or anything. But I've known plenty of close friends and plenty of associates throughout my life who they're very strong in the in the sense of book smart, whereas they're they're good at retaining information. They're good at knowing facts, but when it comes like facts, will only get you so sm so far. Like. Uh, I'm I'm sitting at, for those of you who are audio listeners and are not watching this on YouTube. Um, I'm looking at Nick right now, uh, and he's got these really cool swords in <laughs> the background. <laughs> and uh, I went when I think of life, uh, it's basically like life is like Skyrim. And, uh, f follow me, follow me on this analogy if right. you if you could please follow. I'm here for it. If, I'm here for it. Please entertain me for a little bit. Life is like Skyrim. So, if, uh, first of all, Nick, have you played Skyrim? Uh, I, I have uh, never beaten Skyrim, but I've played enough of it to know. Okay, so... so you, I, I, I played Oblivion all the way through and I beat that. Okay, so you know enough of it to where you'll get this analogy. Absolutely. So, 
uh, if you've played any sort of role-playing game, you'll get this analogy. Life is like Skyrim. So in life, you start off pretty bare-boned and not knowing how to do anything. But as you go through life, you'll, you're going to start to pick up tools. And you realize, like, oh, man, there's all these different things up there that I can master. I can, you, I can become a master of of swordsmanship i can become a master of magic or i can become a master of this thing over here or a master of this thing over here there's all these different options avail available to you and the mistake that a lot of people make in life is that they try to master all the different things they try to master like all right i'm gonna dip my toe into this thing a little bit i'm gonna dip my toe into this thing a little bit and that's not the quite the way to do is that you want to put all your effort and energy into just one pool you want all right i'm going to put all my time and energy like i love magic so i'm going to put all my energy into being the best magician that there is possibly out there and so then you become a master of throwing fireballs so no one can throw a fireball better than <laughs> But he's smiling. He knows where I'm going with this. I'm following you. And no, nobody can throw a fireball better than you can. But if you try to master, like, if you try to be a little bit good at everything, then it's like, all right, I'm a little bit good at throwing, so at, at throwing stuff. I'm a little bit good at swordsmanship, and I'm a little bit good at throwing a fireball. Well, then you don't become 100% on top of your game at one thing in life if you can be a master at something then you've truly achieved like then you've truly achieved status in one area yeah i think i think like um for some people definitely not everybody but i think like your general wellness is tied to your ability to master something or mm -hmm. maybe not master something but your 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 ability to pursue something and to um to see that what you're pursuing is, is paying off you know and i think a lot of people like they they kind of dabble in the idea of improving themselves. Like I'm guilty of this 100. percent I've I've started a lot of things and I I never follow. I don't completely follow through. Um, it's, it's human. Definitely. I like I think a lot of it is just attributed to like me trying to figure out what I like and don't like. Like I'll start something, realize it's not really for me, or realize like oh I didn't I didn't take into consideration this facet. Like I remember I started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and I loved really? it for the first two weeks. I, it was like a, probably a year year maybe two years ago. Started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because I like I watch a lot of podcasters that do it. First first two weeks were great. The guy I was going to was like, it was a really cheap like uh, building. It was kind of run down. Like it was like it's it's like fifty bucks a month and I can come here for unlimited classes for the most part. And I'm like it's not a bad deal. The guy's cool. I'm learning how to defend myself. And then like dude, the third weekend I got a concussion, and then oh. I was going to step off off the mat because we were we were doing this this certain drill, dude. And some guy like accidentally stepped on my knee and my kneecap popped out of its socket. And I would, I'd like pop it back in and I got back in my car. I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't for me. Like, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's like the concussion like was the biggest thing. And I'm like, all right, if I'm doing this for three weeks, obviously I'm an, I'm an, I'm an, I'm a novice, but like, I don't like, I, I'm not, I'm not interested in like trying to like put my, my, my head in harm's way, you know? And there's a lot mm -hmm. of like, there's a lot of times where like guys come in there and they think that you're a young guy and like, you want to be tough and macho and you're like, you're, you're just trying to like. It's just like I was just doing it to learn to have like to have something where I can physically learn and put my body through the motions. I wasn't trying to prove myself to anybody, but it was just like at that point I'm like, I, there's other things I can do. I like I like working out and running and biking a lot more, and maybe I'll get back to it if I find a, a better place to go because I, I did I did really enjoy it my first couple of weeks. But right, it was uh, it was one of those things where you wanted you you wanted to learn some you just wanted to learn something you wanted another skill in there and there's been a lot of times where it's like I, I looked at someone it's like man i'd really i'd really like to know how to do that i'd like to know like I, uh but and not necessarily Bra brazilian jiu-jitsu but like knowing like actually how to like like genuine martial arts or like uh uh i've, I've always wanted to learn how to dual sword like be a dual swordsman <laughs> i like a gen like not like not like uh any sort of like uh play swords like a genuine like kendo stuff i've always been interested in like how the intricacies of that are 
and I've always been fascinated in like just learning a little bit of that to have that in my toolkit, but I've never sat down and done that, but sitting down and doing it is the first step in any sort of uh, learning process of that. Definitely. I think, I think, um, I think just like sitting down, like, I think a lot of times you'll find something in life and then like initially like you're drawn to it for some reason and then you start doing it and you kind of forget why you're even drawn to it in the first place. And then you're kind of like, Oh, I don't even know why I'm doing this anymore. You know, like, mm-hmm. you, like you gotta, you gotta like, I don't know. I, I think, I think it's a, a lot of those things where it's like people like you, you confuse love with infatuation and then all right. of a sudden like you get involved with something. It, it goes for relationships and, and hobbies and whatnot. And then like, you get infatuated for a while and you're like, oh, I, I like this because I, I, I admire somebody that was doing this, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I, I'm going to end up loving this and, you know, if I, if I keep doing it for a long period of time. But, um, but dude, I got to be honest with you. When I saw Ronan in the Avengers trailer wield that sword and he like, he like put it on his arm and he was like, he was like uh, getting the blood off of it. I'm like, okay, dude, I want to get a sword just like that. <laughs> I was like, That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh... Yeah, uh, going back to the point of uh, that you were going over of uh, just just getting into something like how many times have we like just naturally how many times have we ordered something off of Amazon and be like oh man it's gonna be so cool once this thing arrives and no matter what it is like maybe it's like a a new toy or a, a new book or something it's like all right this book's gonna arrive and then you and it's like all right I'm gonna read this book and then you just put it on your desk and then you never touch it. <laughs> Dude, I, you just described half my Amazon purchases right there. I feel like half the yep. half the stuff I buy is impulse, and I'm done yeah. buying impulse stuff. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna let the stuff sit in my cart for a while, and I'm gonna let myself think about it. And then, yeah. like three months later, if it's still in my cart, I'm like, okay, maybe this is something I actually want to have, and not something that I just saw and then it looked nice. Yeah, I um, I used to I used to be really bad at those kind of impulse buys, but then I just sort of I got. I figured out a system where I was able to slap myself on the wrist on it. So I, uh, I used to just mad, uh, buy video games all the time, uh, to like day one, it would come out. I would have it in my lap and it would come like uh, exactly what happened. Like I would look forward to actually buying the game day one and then setting it on my stack of games and not touching it. (laughs) That would bring me joy. That mo- that movement of my arm would bring me joy, <laughs> and that and then I would actually like I would keep up with this stuff so much that I would see the price drop of stuff before I actually got to touch it. It's like, oh man, it's like I I just I I had a. I just had a muscle cramp in my wallet. What happened? <laughs> Charlie horse. Uh, Charlie, Charlie I had, horse. I had a Charlie horse in the bank account. What was that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, so I eventually I came across this uh, shameless plug here. I'm, I won't say the name, I, but I came across this uh, app that actually let me, uh, it gave me a notification on my phone whenever a game would come out that i wanted so it's like oh hey i saw you wanted this game well it's on sale now so now you can go buy it's like cool that made the problem worse (laughs) yeah it makes it way worse like not even not even close like it made the problem way worse so what i did was in order to quell the problem i removed my credit card from the account so that in order to spend money on there i would have to physically go to the store to get a gift card for myself and as that way it's like all right if I really want it, then that means I really want it bad enough to get up off my butt, drive five minutes to the store around the corner, and get a gift card for myself, and then download it. See that that is the play. I, mm-hmm. I remember when I had my my three my Xbox 360, and all my friends were getting Destiny, and uh, I remember I pre-ordered the game, and then I went to pick it up at GameStop. I came home. And I figured out you actually needed like an external hard drive and not a memory card because I had like the Xbox Arcade and it only had like a four gigabyte memory card, not the actual hard drive on the side. And then like I got home and I was trying to install it, and then all my friends were playing it, and I was like, I have to go back to GameStop and get a hard drive now. I had to, I have to go spend like eighty dollars to get a hard drive if I want to play this game, and I did. I went and got like a used hard drive from GameStop, which sucked. And I, I, and then like three weeks later, we never played Destiny again. I yep. thought I thought we were gonna play it for like months. Yeah. I got it, and then for 
two weeks, it was the greatest game I've ever played. And then the third week, I'm like, this game is hot garbage. This is Destiny 1, right? Yeah, Destiny 1. Yeah, I, I remember those two weeks. It was, it was wonderful. It was not what it was promised, but it was still wonderful. And then after those two weeks when, like, the heat died down and then the DLC came, it's like, I don't care about this anymore. Goodbye, DLC. I'm, I'm, I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> it, like, I'm not against grinding in games, but, like, it just kind of felt like I'm getting loot so I can grind harder later to get more loot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it sounds like being a parent <laughs> yeah it's what it sounds like it's kind of what it was and after a while it just kind of got like this is like i'm having fun doing it but it's like it's a little redundant it uh like, i wasn't engaged in the story either that much like the, like the, the traveler or whatever what was, story like, hardly story <laughs> yeah it what made it fascinating was that and i still i i definitely haven't played everything so i can't like account for all the things out there but I can't remember a game where I could, like, just randomly walk up, like, and then it's like, oh, hey, that's a person. And a lot of times you would just, I, if, when I was playing Destiny, I would, like, randomly, like, meet, like, high-profile people when I was playing Destiny. I, I met two Twitch streamers and um one person who was, used to be on a playstation reality show i uh, played destiny with both these people and like a lot of people had stories like these like oh yeah i played destiny with all these like people that you recognize names of wow that's 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 actually really crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow, ben but um but yeah man like going going back to we, we're talking about amazon for a second i saw a video um, of like this giant Amazon blimp over the city and it was like dropping drones to like deliver packages <laughs> and then someone was like talking to me he's like he's like this is the dystopian future that I that they, they always told me about like 10 years ago or whatever and I was like <laughs> is that really dystopian is that like is it is it good or is it bad like it's hard to, it's hard to say there's a lot of it's like the yin yang the good and the bad and the bad and the good it's got all of it right uh, there's a lot there's a lot of discussion to be had about like so all this automation that's coming into place of like you're talking about like the drones all coming down and delivering our packages i uh i was watching a recent episode of uh john oliver you probably saw it of uh him talking about the automate all the automation that's coming into play i watched it all with yeah i watched the entire thing it was fascinating yeah uh a lot of people are doing new segments on that now because it's becoming such a imp important thing that's coming into play it's like the, yeah, these there's new like these jobs are, that we're losing are being replaced, but the new jobs that are coming in, people don't necessarily have education for these new jobs that are coming into place. And some of like, I I think last statistic I I heard is that right now the the biggest company in the world, obviously Apple, uh the the number that they are. Uh, employees that they have on their highest point is nowhere near close the number of people that like Dow had at their highest point. And so there's a big disconnect in there. So where are these new jobs coming from? Where, where do they find work? And it feels like, like you, you introduced me as an entrepreneur. I'm seeking to fi uh, find and make money online, uh, mainly through uh, internet marketing and through sales funnels. But I, the one the thing I find is that, like, usually the hardest thing for people to do is to start asking the right questions. And so when, like, let's say the, tr the truck driver. The truck driver asks, like, oh, hey, where's, like, oh, hey, where's my next job going to come from? How am I going to make money when my when I lose my job? It's not necessarily how am I going to make money is you what you should be asking is where am I going to make money and then right. sudden suddenly when you ask a different question different answers come to mind I uh here's a perfect example so uh these past uh like for not not consecutively but for a, a few years now I've gone to comic-con with my friends and if you if you know anything about Comic Con, you know it's not ex it's like it's a big expense to actually go, whether you go to a small one or a big one. 
And so I've got... I've gone to Comic Con. It's a it's an expense where I would save up money to go. First time I went to Comic Con, I was uh, I was cleaning bathrooms at my at our at our local state building. I would go there and I would clean like five floors of bathrooms. I forgot you had that job for a while. I totally yeah. I totally misremembered that. I I would clean five floors of bathrooms in four hours, and then I would go home. And I had that job to save up to go to Comic Con. And I wanted to, I wanted to go there because, like all nerds, like that's where my people are, so I must go there. And I've some uh, people who shower me nameless. Uh, a lot, actually, a lot of people actually that that fit in this category. It's not like just one one person. It's like several people have fit in this category that I'm about to describe. A lot of people have seen me going to Comic Con, and naturally they ask questions of me, and then they look it up, and then they see like the immense price that the, the immense price tag that it takes to go to this thing so it's like the hotels the there's a ticket to get in the front door and then there's a price tag to actually uh get a signature from the celebrity and then the first question that they ask when they see this is why why is it so expensive that's the wrong question that you should be asking instead instead of asking why is comic con so expensive instead you should be asking how can i acquire the money to go to comic con and then suddenly all these different answers come to your mind of how you can acquire the money to go to comic con but it's not until you actually start asking that question that you start acquiring that answer and sometimes that's the most difficult part is finding that question to ask because some people have a negative mindset pr programmed into them some people have a or some people grow up in a negative environment they have a, like this depressive mindset to where they're always asking negative questions so therefore they're always getting negative outcomes but if you ask yourself like hmm if you start asking how can i afford the most expensive thing in the world then you actually start coming up with answers for that question I completely dig that, Ben. I, f I feel like I'm definitely prone to having, um, I'm kind of prone to having those, like the, the negative um, presumptions about stuff. Like I think mm -hmm. about automation, I think of death. I think about like people com getting like r completely like pushed out of the industry that they're in. I, obviously, I, I'm, I, I think that there's going to be jobs that are going to be opening up. Like I, I read a lot about this stuff because like I feel like this is going to impact our generation more than, you know, than anybody oh. wants to think about it. But Absolutely. Like, you're definitely right that like, whether we adopt, uh, we change the social contract to, you know, help these people either transfer to new jobs or like just kind of like give them a, a comfortable landing when they're thrusted from their semi trucks and they're forced on the on the side of the road, like it's coming. Like I think I think in the, I think when I'm 40 years old, I think it's going to be you're going to see you you might never see a, a, a human being driving a truck ever again. Like it might be, you know, 10. 15 years away but it's going to be coming absolutely and you're going to have you're going to have these semi trucks that are going to drive themselves they're going to figure out how to dock themselves and then you're going to have a lot of these you know i mean brick and mortar stores might not be around but like you're going to have like wherever distribution centers you're going to have these robots they're going to have the giant mechanical arms they're going to be taking these boxes picking them up putting them out and they're going to, they're going to be like completely sorting themselves like mm -hmm. the need for human labor is going to be redundant you know and at the same time what is that really a bad thing? Like if we, if, if everybody benefits from technology and not just the people that actually own the technology, we could live in a, in, in, in sort of a utopia. Obviously there's going to be problems still, but it's like that, that's the dream, you know, like the dream should be to, to minimize the amount of redundant, like the, the amount of labor that is not fulfilling, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I think, I think I, I, I've, I'm following this guy running for president in 2020. His name is Andrew Yang. And he wants to basically, he said if he gets elected, he will promise that anybody from the age of 18 to 65 in America will get $1,000 a month. Because. Really? <laughs> yes. And dude, he's gaining so much traction. Like there's so many people that I never thought that, that never follow politics that I know. And they're like, hey, have you heard about Andrew Yang? Because he, 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 he ran a bunch of businesses. He worked when, when a lot of the, the jobs in Michigan and Ohio got automated. He was trying to like bring jobs back and try to figure out how we get add jobs but he's like for every seven jobs that i'm, I'm adding a hundred are going to be going away he's like this is like it's, it's like it's like i have a bucket and i'm pouring more water in but there's a hole in the bottom of the bucket 
You know, he's like, mm. like no matter what I do, he's like, I'm pouring a lot of water in, but the, 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 the hole is bigger than the water I'm pouring in. So he's like, my, my his, his thought with, with that money is like, um, it's going to be, if, if you're the age between 18 and 65, it, no questions asked, um, you, you're just going to get a check every single month from the government. They're going to give you $1,000 a month, whether that goes towards your, your student loans, whether that goes towards your groceries, whether that goes towards car repairs, whether that goes towards people, people if, if you're wealthy enough, you can donate that money right back and you can pick a charity for it and you can have that money donated somewhere else. But he's like, he's like his thought process is if you try to build people up and bring them out of poverty, it'll... Um, who can really, I mean, people can live on a thousand dollars a month, but who can really like be like, Oh, you know, I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to have a thousand dollars a month. And that's going to all I'm going to be. I think that would almost sort of in a way motivate people to, to, to work more than that. That might be controversial, but like, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like I have a thousand dollars on top of whatever I make. So why don't I just go up there and try to make whatever I can, you know? It's a, it's a, in, it's an interesting concept to think about. Uh, because we're we're in a state right now where so many like if you're if you're in a state of ac actually being poor like a parking ticket could mean the end of your life to if you're living from paycheck to paycheck to paycheck if you have one extra expense at a parking ticket that you just can't pay like that like that could mean the end of your life like that that could actually mean you thro being thrown in jail for something that we all do. <laughs> we all we all get them. Right, exactly. And so it's it's a polarizing. Th uh, uh, are there ne are there negativities to giving everyone? I I definitely think that uh, if everyone like if this massive group of people was to if they were all to get a thousand dollars a month like that, pe there would definitely be some people that would just live on that thousand uh, dollars a month, but also recognizing the fact that uh that is ultimately their choice and they they deserve to make that choice but if someone if someone that wouldn't has a desire to go beyond that go to make more money and to not be trapped in this mound of debt that they've been cursed with then this maybe the first step in doing that because we we're cursed with these questions of like oh this entire generation has more debt than any other like any more student debt than any other generation before how do how do we solve it without at having these ridiculous hyperbolic answers to it other than just like saying oh hey sorry for you <laughs> right and I think it'd be very beneficial because you're going to have a lot of these truckers that are going to be out of work. And a lot of these truckers are 50 year old men. School never right. really interested in them that much. So they kind of went into like the job, like, Hey, I can make a lot of money doing this. And it's actually like, it's, I mean, it's hard on my body, but like, I mean, I can provide for a family, I can buy a house, whatnot. And then like when these guys are unceremoniously like told these robot trucks are going to be the new way to go it, whenever they get implemented, like, I don't see a lot of those people like being able to go back to school. I mean, what would they really go for? Like, you're not going to make three million truckers into coders because, like, the amount of coders you need is going to actually decrease too over time. Because, like, mm -hmm. as software gets more efficient, we're not going to need as many coders or accountants. Like, a lot of the stuff can be a lot of this, a lot of the redundant menial stuff can be automated. Um, I, I just think I just think like the idea that like we'll just turn them all into coders, we'll just send them all to ITT Tech, and they're going to learn. It. I, 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 I don't I don't know if that's the that's the solution, but. Um, and then I think it's going to be good for, for the, for the prison system. Like when you're, when a lot of people, when they go to prison, they come out, they have nothing to, 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 to do. At least you have a thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. uh, at least you're going to have your basic needs met and that might be enough for you to get back on your feet, you know? And maybe it won't, maybe that'll cost t taxpayers less money because they're not going to be funding people going to jail because they're, they're doing crime out of desperation, you know? Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, I think there's a lot of problems with it. I think there's a lot of stuff that, like, I'm talking about the good things, but like, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that have like um, negative associations with it too. Right. Uh, you uh, you mentioned ITT Tech, which is like that just make that just gives me a migraine all on its own. Cause I, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because that's a for profit school, so it's like, oh man. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, but I, it's interesting. Uh, so with my business uh, right now, one of the things I do is I I talk. I gave the analogy of Skyrim of mastering just one thing. Uh, I'm gonna ping, I'm gonna ping pong back to that real quick as we talk about these trucker these truckers that are gonna be out of work. So 
one of the things I do is I hire uh, VAs, which are virtual assistants. So I got, right, right now I'm going to need, I, I've got like a tiny diagram up on my whiteboard over there. Uh, I need a project manager. I need a project developer. I need a guy who builds the online sales funnels. I need a designer for copywriter. I need this, that, 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 that. Oh, and, oh, and I need that person. So do you think I know how to do all that? <laughs> Definitely not, not. Not close to all of it, no. And, and let's also throw out the, hy the uh, hypothetical. Let's say I was a 100% master of all of those things. Do you think I want to spend the time on doing all those things? No, I do not. So what, uh, what, what I usually do is uh, I'm pretty good at Photoshop. So, and I'm pretty good at video editing. So what I do is uh, in order to Photoshop, I'll usually do my own Photoshopping. I'll do my own banners and whatnot. But if I want to save time, I, what I'll do is like, I'll, hey, I need this uh, e-cover for this project or whatever. So there's a website called Fiverr.com. You can go there and there's all these people who will do like tiny tasks for you. They'll get, take one thing off your shoulder. And it's like, hey, you need something Photoshop. This guy will Photoshop something for you. And it's, it's done. And you, are, you don't have to worry about that anymore. It's like, hey, you need a picture Photoshop for your new book. This guy will design it for you. And it's all about finding your individual superpower. What are you good at? There's, there's people out there called ghost writers. And what they basically do is that they, they will write for you. So you, you can get a really good ghost writer and say, hey, I need an outline. For, uh, I need a book written. Here's an outline for it. This is what chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are going to be like. Here's the outline. Go write the book. The ghost writer will write the book for you. They will actually, you will pay them, and they will write the book for you. And you can have it so that, you, like, legally speaking, you can have your name as the author on the book and publish it on Amazon. If you don't know how to do that, get someone else to publish it for you <laughs> and then have someone else uh, design the cover for you. And then your book is published now. And then all of it is taken care of for you. If you are a trucker looking for a job, find your one superpower in this bracket of things that people need done and then do that for people. That is astounding. You can have somebody else write the book for you <laughs> and then publish it with your name on it. Yes. In the future, I will have 100 books and they will, none of them will be written by me, but they will all have my name on it. <laughs> but I didn't know you are an expert in Pilates. Yes. <laughs> I'm an expert in Pilates. <laughs> you, have like a, you have like a hardcover, like super thick, just talking about like yes. how to do Pilates. I'm posing on my expert in Pilates book. <laughs> oh my God. I would laugh so hard, dude. I laughed so incredibly hard. But no, I think, I think it's just one of those things where like, I, I think, I think like I, I've read statistics that like, if you were to be born in a, in a time in America or a time in human civilization, you'd want to be born right now in America because we have it as good as we can be. But then right. you see, like, there's a lot of people that are very, very unhappy, like very unhappy. And uh, it's like one of those things where it's like, it's, it's, it's just a weird, it's a weird correlation kind of thing where it's like, is it just because like we have it so good now and like our biological, like. The, the the things that led us to become so successful as, as creatures, like, is that almost like being removed from everyday life? And like, are we just more or less just kind of like drones in this economic machine? And we look for like the worst aspects of it just to like make it seem like we're like figuring out like, I don't know, is it, do we look for the worst parts of society just to, to make it better? Or is it just one of those things where like, we're just, we're not happy, like it, this society is not ma like manifesting, um, our our biological urges in the, in the same way that you know that it did when we were you know uh here's a couple of interesting uh, statistics for you uh like a few like a couple decades ago back when like tv was first getting started uh the a the average amount of advertisements that you might see in a day was uh 500 500 now it's 5000 in a single day and uh, on and on, in the world right now uh we are 
the we we are one of the wealthiest countries, but that does not mean we are one of the happiest countries. Right. Uh, we have we have so much, but that doesn't mean that we appreciate the things that we have. And so we have that. Like, if I wanted to learn something, like let's say I wanted to learn how to act, I wanted to learn how to be an actor, and I, and I like we're not just like we're not just playing off of that tangent that we had before. Like, let's say I genuinely had the fire to be an actor, and I did. Uh, I didn't want to go the college course. Like, I didn't want to go off somewhere to college and, like, spend a lot of money and accumulate college debt. None of that. None of that. Like, I actually wanted to learn how to be an actor. There are courses online that you can go and, lo- go and learn from actors. Like, there's online courses that you can go and learn for an, a realistic amount of money. There's courses that you can go take on that. There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of YouTube videos on that exact topic where you can go and learn how to, how to act from, from people, probably from, probably you could probably find YouTube videos from people with like credibility on the set topic. Like, Hey, I was a stage actor for so long. And here's what I learned on acting. Here's the difference between stage acting and movie acting. Right. And, And like, if that's just one example here, here's this whole information ethos And yet we feel, and yet it's like, you would think that we would like be always be happy, but it doesn't. We feel, we feel numb. It like, it overwhelms our senses. We feel numb to it sometimes. And yet a lot of, a lot of times we're seeking directions. One of the, uh, I'll give you a little piece of uh, inside information. Uh, So I said before I was building online sales phones. One of the things we do sometimes uh, is, we will sell playlists. And so like we're selling like, Hey, I'm selling you chapstick or, or whatever. Let's like, let's say we're trying, we're selling you some uh, music. We're, se- we're trying to sell someone's music. We're selling like beatboxing music. It's like, all right, what do we got to go along with this? Hey, I know what we'll do. Whoever buys this beatboxing music will also send you a playlist of, the five greatest YouTube tutorials on how to make your own beatboxing music. This information is already out there. Anyone can find it. It's free, but that doesn't matter. I'm the one with the link. It's more about, yeah, it's more about like, it's just because information is out there doesn't mean people know how to access it, you know? Right. It, oh. it, uh, maybe not necessarily know how to access it, but people don't always have the drive to go out there and seek it out or not or even necessarily have the inkling to go at, to go access it or know that they have the interest in going to access this information yeah for sure i i think i think it's like um i i just think convenience is always worth worth a lot of money you know it's worth a lot of value you know mm-hmm. making things more convenient for people figuring out like hey i can i can make this instead of searching all over the internet for the best video, if I know the best video, I mean, that's definitely not, you know, it's, it's, it's worth something. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just, um, I, I struggle with it because like, I, I just see in society, people are just genuinely unhappy and we're supposed to live in like the best country in the world. I think America is the best country in the world. I think we have a lot of problems though. And I think, I think, uh, mm-hmm. I think technology is going to be our saving grace. I think, I think, I think politically, I don't want to talk about too much about politics, but I think politically it's going to be more divisive until we get to a a, a point when technology is so efficient and so good that it makes everyone's lives more enriched. But I I think, I think for a while, I think, I think when it's first implemented, it's only going to be used by a lot of really wealthy companies. And then over time, I think it's going to take some, it's going to take a lot of activism and people going out there and like demanding, Hey, Hey, like, all the all these things that like you that these robots are doing are are stuff that we used to do to actually make a living and now we can't do that anymore mm-hmm. and like obviously like we have more that means we have more freedom to like be creative and i think a lot of people that are artists and that kind of stuff they're going to they're going to prosper i think because they're going to have they're going to have something that robots cannot give you like people that are doing stuff that's really creative on the internet that really requires a lot of like analytical thinking and and um um compassion and that kind of stuff like that's going to be 
that's going to be priceless because I mean, but a lot of the, a lot of the menial repetitive stuff, it's just going to be. Like, I, I think we should automate that, but we just need to make sure that it's, it's automated in a way where everyone benefits. Right, definitely. Like, there's people still have like relationship services, like matchmaking services, like not 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 like not like Tinder or anything like that, like actual relationship services, and those are things that cannot. Uh, be automated or anything like that and so more human services are probably gonna come into play where we are we are actually knowing our fellow man but we have to get over this hump first of letting automated like letting automated stuff go and learning learning new jobs and learning this new area um i want to propose a question uh to you uh (laughs) you're smiling i like questions ben uh you you uh You've touched a few times on like that you, uh people today are more sad than they they have in the past. Why why do you think that people are uh sad and depressed in today's modern time because of advancements? Why do you uh think they have that sort of connection? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say this like I remember last summer I was camping up north with five of my greatest friends and literally dude from the time I got up there to the time I left I was the happiest person in the world like I don't think there was any person in the world that was happier than me and like I can't say that for really any other time in my life mm-hmm. I mean like I'm I'm usually I'm usually a very happy person like I I I always try to look at the the better part of things but there's always, there's always that part of myself that like is like um unconsciously pessimistic i think everyone's got that part of themselves i try to suppress that part of myself i try to make sure i know when it's happening but sometimes it it, 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 it comes out you know and um i just think in this society we i think people are more separated than ever and i think I, I don't think anyone truly feels like they have like i mean people have families but like i don't it's just one of those things where like we we're not relying on each other like we used to in the past like we're not we like you don't like you don't have that like really like that really um intense relationship with the, everybody else like if you're living in a tribe of 70 people and you know everybody in that tribe and you know they love you and you know that they they value you and you know that your work is valued and like you, you're seeing the same people every single day like that's why like in high school i think a lot of people aren't that like depressed because like, you're going to school every day i mean people are definitely depressed in high school don't get me wrong i was gonna stop you there but keep going <laughs> like i, I know I, a lot of people that i knew in high school were depressed but like for, for me yeah. personally like a lot of those i didn't really have that side of me until i left high school like i am i had the, the greatest group of friends we always saw each other we always hung out outside of school we always had the same interests and like it yeah. made it very bearable for me like it made it so like oh it's this, this is a, a, a good place to be and then when you leave that place and like all your friends kind of become fractitious and they break off from each other and they're going in different directions and um, you don't see those people anymore. You don't realize how big of a mm-hmm. toll it has on you. You know, it has a big toll on you. And I think, I think there's so many temporary people that bounce in and out of your life nowadays. And it's just like, it's like you, you can never. You're, you're trying to, you're trying to grab at the like, unconsciously or consciously, you want to have this group of people around you because it makes you feel safe and loved and secure. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have that. It's almost, it's almost like, it's almost like you have like a. It, they're, they're just like it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So it's, if you don't if, if you don't have that one layer of needs being met, it doesn't matter if the top six layers are great, you know. Uh, I I see what you mean. I've uh, I try to coach. I, I see I see people doing that and try to coach them out of like, look, don't try to don't try to fall in the trap of like, don't have this person in your life just because you're afraid of being alone, whether it's like a friend or another relationship. Know know your worth as an individual. I remember uh, to go back on what you were saying before about like camping and whatnot. Uh, a few years ago, I got the I got the VR headset. I got the PlayStation VR. And what if for those of you that have not tried a VR headset, what I noticed when I first put it on and when I first started playing it was that I could do nothing but but play this headset. And when it, when you put it on your, like, I can't answer text messages. I can't look at my laptop or anything like this. I can do nothing but do this one task, which is weird because, you know, like almost 24-7 nowadays, it's like I'm, my brain is part whatever, my brain is in one place doing whatever task I'm doing. And then the other part of my brain is like what, what notifications do I have on my phone? What's going on on my phone? 
but that part of my brain gets sh got shut off for just 30 minutes and it was it was almost like i got unplugged it, it was almost like really getting unplugged from from the matrix it's like is this what breathing feel feels like again <laughs> <laughs> This is how it feels to sit down and eat a meal and not yeah, worry like, about who's blowing your phone up. So yeah, it's like it's this is how it feels to like actually like sit down and take a breath and not worry about work because it feels good. It feels really good to take ten minutes and like not have, like turn like actually turn your phone off and just watch Avengers. <laughs> yeah, it feels so good. Mm -hmm. It feels good to engross yourself in something that's not your life and like to really like to really just like. It's almost like what, before I go to see Endgame, I took I took the entire day off, dude. I'm gonna meditate the oh. entire day. Oh. I'm, gonna, I'm I'm just gonna really get in that in that space for like I was when I was like in 2012 when I saw the first Avengers. I was like in high school and I was really happy go lucky. I, I want to make sure that I am the in the best possible mindset before I go see this movie, so I can just enjoy it. I'm like this is gonna be the best thing. Like I just I, I think it's important to meditate. Maybe maybe that's what we're missing. We're just missing that like the time where you take an hour to yourself and you don't do anything, but just kind of like sit with yourself or just do something you enjoy doing mm -hmm. and uh, just like really disconnect from everything because you don't always need to be plugged into everything. You know, you need, you need to be, you need to, you need time to unplug, Like this is my time. No one else is going to interrupt me. Nothing else is going to go on. This is just my time to think about my life. Do you, uh, do you listen to ASMR on YouTube? So my friend, some of my friends in high school uh, actually told me about ASMR and I, it doesn't really work for me that much. Like, I'll, 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 I, I'll get, like, the occasional, like, it does make me a little bit more relaxed, and, like, I'll get, like, the occasional, like, tingle in my spine, but, like, it doesn't, it's not, I don't think it's, I, I'm more, like, I like to listen to philosophers talk, and, like, I like to listen to, like, music, and, like, birds chirping, and water flow, like, I guess that all of it, that it kind of is ASMR, too, but. Yeah, that, that, that kind of falls under the, like, same, same umbrella when I, 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 w I wouldn't say, I, like, I would never ask you, like, do you like to listen to relaxing waterfalls on youtube i would just ask you do you like to listen to asmr yes that, the answer would be yes to both yes that's 100 so, like, the answer that that uh that's a lot of like i i use that to like take 10 minutes to relax uh, i'm not sure if i told you this before or not but i uh i suffer from migraines and so if i need like 10 minutes or something to like just sit down and come back to earth and get my mind centered i'll do that on youtube for like 10 minutes and silence all my notifications yeah i i grew up when i was a kid i i had like th two or three migraines per week and it would last a long time and i'd always have to put a wet washcloth on my head and lay down take mm -hmm. a lot of like pain killing like a lot of like ibuprofen and stuff and like i used to have like it used to get bad like I used to have like trouble seeing and then i just kind of grew out of it like i might have like one one every few months now but I'm, I'm definitely not that bad. Uh, I want to cycle back to uh, Avengers Endgame and that yes. conversation that we were having for a little bit. Uh, it's weird. Uh, it, with the entire Marvel Universe, it's weird to look back on uh, so something like this because... Uh, do, you, do you watch Doctor Who? No, not really, but uh, I okay. know enough about it. So if you... Okay, so uh, you know enough about it. <laughs> so yeah, I know I can, enough about it. Okay, so I can make an analogy. Um uh, so it like in Doctor Who he there's an analogy where he like he regenerates. He be, he becomes a different person all throughout the series. And like a different person plays the doctor all throughout the entire series. Okay, yep, and, yep, yep. Yeah, and it's weird looking back on like the entire Marvel universe because these different movies are like the timeline is not the same as like when the movies were released. It's completely different than that. And so I'm looking back on all these different movies when they were released and the type of person I was when those movies were out and when I was watching them. And it's like, I'm, I'm, this, is a, this is a universe where I'm growing up with it. And I think we all are at the same time. It's like, I'm evolving with these characters. Dude, I think I think when Kevin, Ken, I know Kevin Feige and a few producers and directors sat down every day in the same room for three years, and they talked <laughs> about where they want the Marvel Cinematic Universe to go. And uh, I think that was definitely one of their biggest things. They're like, we want to take this generation and we want to take them on a ride. We'll, we'll we'll start with Iron Man, Captain America, Thor. We'll do Avengers, and like it's almost like every time you see an Avengers movie, you see the characters grow and you think about where you were, like you, like you just said at mm -hmm. that time. And then, like a lot of a lot of like my 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 parents and my people that are that that are that age, they don't really understand the Marvel universe that much. And I don't blame them because I, I don't think I'd understand if I was their age either. But like, it's just such an incremental part of like my my youth, you know. 
Mm-hmm. The amount of times I was in school and like I was in like the computer room trying to write a paper, but instead I was watching Iron Man three, the trailer for it. And, like instead, yep. like you know, I was just I was just doing things like that because like I was like, this is so much cooler. Like this is the coolest movie of all time, and um, it's just cool, man. It's it's, it's cool to see. It's cool to see Iron Man in, in his first suit in the rubble, and then all of a sudden you see him in the oh, Mark eighty five in this trailer, and it's just like, man, he came such a long ways. Uh, uh I remember when like Avengers two. Came, uh, no, not Avengers 2. Like, yeah, this was Avengers 1 when we were uh, like high school time. Uh, I went to go see it uh, at midnight uh, with some buddies. And I was like, all right, this is cool. I'm going to go sit down. And I'm, and everyone's like suited up and they're in costume. And I'm going to go see it with my buddies. And I went and sat down uh, with some people. And then my, my friends I actually went to go see it ditched me. And I was... <laughs> yes, I'm not even kidding. Like, they... I, I went I went and saw Avengers one move, midnight premiere alone, and like I'm not even uh, <laughs> I'm I like the, those same people I don't even hang out with anymore <laughs> like for good reason. Ben, it's so sad, man. Uh, I don't uh, I I don't I didn't go see Avengers two uh, at midnight at all. Uh, let me be perfectly honest with you, Avengers two was not that great. I'm sorry, it it was just more Avengers. But uh, I went to go see uh, Avengers, uh, the last one, Infinity War, uh, at at midnight. It's like, I'm I, I, I'm gonna have make carve out my own time, and I'm gonna go see Avengers Infinity War because I want to go see Avengers Infinity War. Yeah, for and, sure. And then I I texted you, and I was thinking like, I'm gonna go see event uh, Avengers, and you know what? I'm gonna go pi- buy a, a second ticket because you know what? I don't know why someone someone will want to go see it with me. Events like uh, by the time it comes around, someone will fill that seat. <laughs> Dude, for sure. It's yeah. This is gonna be like the this is the movie of our lifetime, man. This is gonna be. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is it's like it's gonna be three hours long. I heard too. Yeah. And that's uh, just mind blowing to me. There's been a whole bunch of memes floating around the internet. It's like. Oh, Avengers fans, you your movie is three hours long. Oh, you haven't even he- heard of the Lord of the Rings, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, right. yeah. Lord of the Rings is ridiculously long. But I almost hope, like the first, like if my prediction for the movie comes true, I hope the first part is them all getting back together. The second part is them going in the quantum realm, getting all the stones from past movies, and the third part is the final fight against Thanos. Like it's like broken up into three separate parts, and then. Ooh. That's what I'm thinking it's going to be. Hopefully. That's my, that's my hope. I have no expectations. I'm just going to be pleasantly surprised by whatever happens. We, obvi- we obviously know that everyone comes back to life. Yeah. Because there's more people cast for this movie than there are living bodies in the Marvel Universe right yeah. now. <laughs> yes. So like, that's, oh, you, you can't tell me Black Panther's dead for good. <laughs> oh, 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 I can and I will. <laughs> <laughs> And Spider Man's not going for good. Star Lord is going to come back. Uh, the, uh, did you see? There was a, a like. I, I don't need to like turn this into a meme conversation, but there's so many good ones. Uh, there was there was a SpongeBob one that was going around about Avengers: Infinity War, and it was uh, of the episode where uh, Squidward gave a pie to SpongeBob and then he blew up, and it. Uh, uh, Mr. Krabs was looking at Squidward, and Squidward was the Marvel Universe, and Mr. Krabs was Sony Pictures, and he just, Sony Pictures just looks at Squidward and says, you had to kill him. I did I, see that uh, one, Ben. You I, had to I, kill him. I finally let you make an Avenger, and you had to kill him. <laughs> ben, I'm trying to find this one meme. Yeah, dude, I don't even know if I want to show this one, because it's, re- it's really weird. <laughs> but it's like, it's got Buzz and Woody, and Ant Man is on Woody's head, and then Tony or Iron Man's on on Buzz's head, and then it's a, it's it it, uh, it's, it goes Ant Man's like uh, Tony, we missed the gauntlet, and then Iron Man goes, we're not aiming for the gauntlet, and then it shows it it shows basically it shows Thanos in the position of like a silverback gorilla with his butt hanging in the air, and it's like <laughs> they're flying Ant Man right into. <laughs> 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 I laughed so hard, dude. I laughed so hard. Send me that hard. later if you find it. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you for sure. I laughed so hard. I was like, this is so ridiculous. There, uh, I forget if this was like a robot chicken thing or if it was like a YouTube compilation 
of like how how Avengers Infinity War should have ended. Uh, uh, but it was like the moment where like everyone was fighting to get the gauntlet off of Thanos, and then uh, Doctor Strange comes in, and then just cuts like just comes in with a portal and just cuts the gauntlet off of his arms. Like, there we go, problem solved. Universe is saved. <laughs> It could have been such an easy fix. Like Doctor Strange <laughs> definitely had the, the the ability to get that gauntlet off. You can't mm-hmm. tell me he didn't. But they would have had it off if Star Lord wouldn't have messed it up and let his emotions get the better of him. I'm I, I mean we need to address something. Thor also screwed up. <laughs> Thor screwed up royally. Thor Thor could have killed him, but he didn't. <laughs> it's cool because like. Infinity War was the Avengers all broken up. It was the worst timing. Ragnarok just happened. Asgard was blown up. Civil War happened. Tony and Steve were split. Um, mm-hmm. All this stuff happened. Uh, Hulk wouldn't come out. So, like, we're not seeing the Avengers at their, at their full strength, you know? And right. then it's like, and then at the same time, like, all, after all these heroes are dealing with, with what happened in the past 18 movies, they're not thinking straight. Like, Thor, it, he's not looking to save the universe. He wanted revenge on Thanos, in a way, for killing all the Asgardians. Yep. And then Star Lord's like, I don't care. You just you just threw my girlfriend over uh, uh, off the cliff. Like I'm just looking <laughs> to punch you in the face. And I think it's going to show in this movie. Like it's 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 going to be everyone coming back together, and they have the central goal, and they're going to have a plan in motion, and not just like, oh, we're just going to wing this, like like Wakanda, you know? Like mm-hmm. oh, we'll just fly here and hope for the best. And th- this is going to be completely different. Like, yeah, d- definitely. I'm. Uh... Oh my god, I, I I don't think my body can take many more people disappearing. <laughs> I, dude, if he snaps again and he, like, the <laughs> half of the half that's left disappears, I'm just gonna be like, alright. Oh. I'll watch it when it comes to DVD. I can't handle this right now. I can't handle this. Oh. But yeah, Ben. I think we're, like, what, like an hour in right now, man? I, I don't know. I was gonna, I was kinda gonna ask you how, uh, what, uh, what's our time, what's our time at? Uh, I think we started like around nine thirty. So if you're cool with ending it, man, I'm cool with ending it right now. It's your show. <laughs> I know, Ben. So I think I think I'm cool with ending it if you if you're if you're okay with that. All right, let's wrap it up. All right, sounds good, Ben. Ben, it was a pleasure having you on, man. I appreciate talking to you, man. I always love talking to you. You always got amazing insight, dude. And uh, for for all of you guys, my friend Ben here, he has his own podcast called the Code of Life Podcast, and he's an entrepreneur. You can go to his Facebook page. His name is Ben E Big. Um, I'll probably put a link in the, in my, in my YouTube video and stuff. So you can go find him and you can, uh, you can check him out and stuff. So Ben, I think we're going to call it, man. All right. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Ben, it's been a really good time, man. Been a really good time.